Hi, welcome to the session on Barriers in the Language Classrooms. <music> Difference between language learning and acquisition. The words learning and acquisition are best explained in relation to the learning of languages. The way a child learns this mother tongue is what best explains acquisition. There is no explicit teaching of grammar rules of the language here. And yet, even without any formal instruction, children are able to use the language properly in communication. A subconscious process is what helps them learn the language. And even with little or very little knowledge of the rules of grammar, they develop the ability to identify what is right and wrong with regard to language use. It should be noted that Continuous communication helps a lot in language acquisition. Human beings have an inbuilt ability to learn language. There is also the dire need to communicate constantly. This is why even if they are not taught the rules of grammar, children develop the ability to communicate properly in their mother tongue. Acquisition is hence a natural process. In sharp contrast, the rules of the language are explicitly explained and taught while learning a language. The structure of the language is focused on and a lot of training is provided to verbally explain the way these structures are used. Employing a very careful selection and gradation of structures, language is rigorously taught. Barriers in the second language classroom. The learning of a second language is certainly not an easy process. Students across the world who learn a new second language face a range of barriers. These barriers can majorly be classified into the following heads. A. Social factors. 1. Peer groups. The role of the peer groups in language learning is of prime significance. Peer learning should be mutually beneficial and involve the sharing of knowledge, ideas and experience between the participants. It can be described as a way of moving beyond independent to interdependent or mutual learning. A lot would actually depend on how supportive the peers are since many of the activities in language learning would require a collective effort. 2. Socio-economic status SES is an economic and sociological combined total measure of a person's work experience and of an individual's or family's economic and social position in relation to others based on income, education and occupation. It has often been noted that the socio-economic status of a student might have an impact on the learning of a second language. Though research studies are still being conducted, the high socio-economic status of an individual has often been described as a motivating factor in L2 learning and vice versa. 3. Literacy Literacy is traditionally understood as the ability to read, write and use arithmetic. High levels of literacy have been generally found to have a positive impact on language learning as in the case of any other learning. Lower levels of literacy are believed to have detrimental effect on L2 learning. 4. Parental educational status. The educational status of parents has been found to have a definitive say on the learning of their children. Parents with a high level of education are also expected to inspire their students to learn better. Likewise, students whose parents have not been educated are expected to have a slightly lesser inclination towards L2 learning in general. 5. Support system Learners who hail from very poor social and economic backgrounds need to have a proper support system that aids their learning process. This might include additional support from the instructors or even access to infrastructure and technological devices like the computer. Lack of a support system might lead to deficient learning or even dropouts. B. Psychological factors. 1. Effective filter. Effective filter is the term that Stephen Krashen has used to refer to the complex of negative emotional and motivational factors that may interfere with the reception and processing of comprehensible input. 
Such factors include anxiety, self-consciousness, boredom, annoyance, alienation and so forth. According to Krashen, one obstacle that manifests itself during language acquisition is the effective filter that is a screen that is influenced by emotional variables that can prevent learning. When the effective filter is high, individuals may experience stress, anxiety and lack of self-confidence that may inhibit success in acquiring a second language. On the other hand, a low effective filter facilitates risk-taking behavior in regards to practicing and learning a second language. 2. Self-confidence Self-confidence is an essential source of energy in life and plays a peculiar role in language learning as well as in learning overall. The acquisition of a new language is really part of the journey of education that includes the exploration of yourself, your weaknesses and fragilities as well as your strong points. A person with high self-confidence learns language much faster than one with lesser self-confidence. 3. Motivation Motivation plays a key role in any kind of learning and language learning is no exception. Motivation has several effects on students' learning and behavior. Motivation directs behavior towards particular goals. Motivation increases initiation of persistence in activities. Learners are more likely to begin a task they actually want to do. An unmotivated student is likely to learn less than a motivated one. 4. Attitude towards language and learning. Attitude refers to the way a person feels about something or someone. The general attitude towards language is expected to have an important say in learning the language. A person with a favorable attitude towards language is expected to learn it faster than a person with a less favorable attitude. C. Biological factors 1. Psychomotor skills Psychomotor learning is demonstrated by physical skills such as movement, coordination, manipulation, dexterity, grace, strength, speed, actions which demonstrate the fine motor skills such as use of precision writing instruments like the pen or the pencil or tools. 2. Cognitive functioning. Cognitive functions can be defined as cerebral activities that lead to knowledge including all means and mechanisms of acquiring information. Cognitive functions encompass reasoning, memory, attention and language and lead directly to the attainment of information and thus knowledge. A normal level of cognitive function is necessary for language learning to take place. Those with impairment in cognitive functioning might find language learning difficult. 3. Physical impairments Physical disabilities are of different kinds. A physical disability is a limitation on person's physical functioning, mobility, dexterity or stamina. Other physical disabilities include impairments which limit other facets of daily living such as respiratory disorders, blindness, epilepsy and sleep disorders. A person with physical disabilities can find that his ability to learn a language is considerably hindered. Though there are several technological devices that could augment language learning for the physically disabled, the disability could impede language learning in multiple ways. 4. Psychological health A sound psychological makeup is imperative in language learning. The mental age of the student has also been considered as a determinant factor in language learning. Individuals who are differently abled might need additional support to learn language. 5. Age and health. The age of a person is expected to have a say in the learning of a new language. Though other factors as attitude might augment language learning, decreased cognitive abilities that accompany an increase in age can slow down language learning. D. Pedagogical factors. 1. Method of instruction. Plenty of methods of teaching English are available at the teacher's disposal today. The teacher should, however, make a judicious selection and opt for the most appropriate method. An incorrect methodology could have a detrimental effect on language learning. 
the advantages and disadvantages of almost every method have been listed out and it has been pointed out that an eclectic approach is perhaps the best to adopt. 2. Improper materials and curriculum. The selection of the right materials and curriculum will undoubtedly have a say on the impact of the language learning program. Care should be taken to ensure that the materials used in the classroom are up to date and state of the art. Technology needs to be introduced into the language classroom as well and optimum utilization of the technological aids done. 3. Limited access to original language input. A native speaker is a person who was born, grew up and obtained his or her education in a country where the target language is the official language and by consequence the native language of this person. Therefore, the language input by a native speaker is considered more original than input of any other kind. This is also the reason why it is considered extremely beneficial in the learning of L2. In the absence of the native speaker, recorded audio inputs of native language can also be used. Limited access to original language input via native speakers or recorded input can lessen the pace of language learning and also reduce the quality of instruction. 4. Inappropriate learning skills and strategies. At times, it is seen that a mother might focus a bit too much on one of the four language skills at the cost of the others. Speaking is a skill that is often ignored, while the focus of many learning programs remains on writing. Also, unsuitable and unfitting learning strategies might cause more harm than good. 5. Rigid teacher-student relationship. Improving students' relationships with teacher has important, positive and long-lasting implications for students' academic and social development. Too rigid and harsh relationships between the teacher and students could have an adverse effect on language learning. Students are less likely to open up before a teacher who is difficult to approach and tough to communicate with. 6. Illogical planning and use of time. Time management is the process of planning and exercising conscious control over the amount of time spent on specific activities, especially to increase effectiveness, efficiency or productivity. Good time management enables you to work smarter, not harder, so that you get more done in less time, even when time is tight and pressures are high. Illogical planning and usage of time slows down the language learning process. E. Cultural factors. 1. Mother tongue interference. Language transfer, also known as L1 interference, linguistic interference and cross-linguistic influence, refers to speakers or writers applying knowledge from one language to another language. Negative transfer is a behavioral psychology term that refers to the interference of the previous knowledge with new learning. It relates to the experience with one set of events that could hurt performance on related tasks. Transfer of learning or training is said to be positive when the learning or training carried out in one situation proves helpful to learning in another situation. 2. Cultural conflicts. In the learning of any new language, cultural conflicts cannot be ignored. Any learner learning a foreign language has to consider the cultural ramifications that are involved in the development of that foreign language. A closer analysis is likely to bring to light the huge disparities that exist between the two cultures and unless and until the students come to terms with it, problems in language learning are bound to arise. 3. Government policy and investment. A supportive government policy would help language learning go a long way. While it remains that most governments across the world have their own doors open to foreign language learning, investment in the same varies widely. The greater the investment, the better the prospects for language learners and vice versa. The Indian scenario. In India, where English is taught as a second language, the language has been increasingly gaining significance over the years. It has come to a point where every educated Indian, while being well versed in his mother tongue and often in Hindi, the national language, also develops an expertise in the English language by the time she or he completes high school. 
knowledge of the English language is also considered a benchmark of excellent education and English continues to be used as a common language of communication across the country that has a cultural diversity that is much admired. While it remains that there is a deficiency of excellent English language teachers in the country, it should be realized that things are getting better by the day. Gone are the days when teachers of English in the country resorted to mere translations from English into the mother tongue. Today, they have thrown open their arms to the influx of technology and find themselves standing on the threshold of an educational boom that promises to render India one of the biggest powers in the world. They have designed and redesigned strategies and methodologies that efficiently lessen the barriers that English language learners face in the classroom. Language barriers in the classroom have emerged to be a major issue that prevents non-native students from performing excellently well. The full potential of the students never get to be realized either. By identifying the exact barriers that impede language learning, strategies could be devised to counter them. It's only through timely intervention that the damage caused by these barriers could be effectively minimized. Before we attend the next session, please try to answer the following questions. 1. Differentiate between language learning and acquisition. 2. Delineate how the culture of languages influences language learning. 3. Explain how Krashen's theory turns relevant in language learning. References Language Barriers in the Classroom Sarah Thomas, Cindy Brown and Jessica McDavid Hope this session was useful to you. Thank you for watching. Bye.